Okay, Scorsese has uh, finished setting up his shot, so I think we're good to go. He will win the Oscar this year. Uh, <laughs> so we, uh, we're actually going to be reading uh, James Dunnigan's book tonight, or parts of it. I'm actually not sure what he's going to read. Uh, very excited, though. Uh, I started Cactus Press in 2006, which seems like a millennia ago. Uh, kind of done a few books here and there overall, but I think this is kind of the uh, beginning of a new wave of it, and I'm so happy James gave me his manuscript and we could do this. Uh, it was absolutely a pleasure to read. Very uh, excited to share with you guys. So James Dunnigan is a poet from Montreal. His first collection, The Stained Glass Sequence, won the Frog Hollow Press Chapbook Award in 2018. He writes in English and French, reads Latin, and sells fish for a living. Everyone, please welcome James Dunnigan. So, can everybody hear me? Okay, yeah. Okay, perfect. Lower? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, so one of the cool things about this book that I made with Devin and, uh, and uh, whom uh, Bianca Faro designed the cover for, I'm very proud of. Um, one, of, one of the cool things about this book is that mostly it's made up of stuff that I read over here as, a, as a, either a feature or as a, an open micer for accent. And uh, on that basis, I was kind of struggling to figure out what I was going to read tonight. Because most of the shit I'd already read. <laughs> so that I decided I would read tonight just one poem. Just one, but it's a long one, and it's um, kind of the centerpiece to the book, such that if you like what you hear tonight, you'll probably like the rest of the book, and if you don't like it, then don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and this poem is called White Raven Poem. And it was written in the summer of 2017. And it begins um, with uh, uh, an epigraph from a play by Corneille. And this play, Polyucte, is a play about a very early Christian, you know, who abandons, you know, his Roman citizenship and his, his life as a Roman citizen, his wife, his, his children, etc., in order to follow Christ in a period where Christ is a uh, you know, Osama bin Laden. And, um, and the scene from which I quote here is a scene where he's in jail and his wife comes to him and pleads with him to try, you know, and get him away from Christ. And she says, Quitter cette chimère et m'aimer. And Poyot answers, Je vous aime. Beaucoup moins que mon Dieu, mais bien plus que moi-même. White Raven Poem. A white raven came to me yesterday, unfolded its wings behind me, and forced me to ground, and said, Remember me, remember me. And my mouth in the dust could give no answer and my tears in the dust made mud of the ground where I hid my face. And the raven with its feathers stroked my hair and said, I have come back, I have come back from Europe and I'm headed to Ontario. Who do you want me to say hi to in Ontario? I am the fragrance in the dark, the field that on a summer's night fills rain and air with sounds of crickets and the smell of time. I am the cricket in the night. The raven has been eyeing since this morning, and the rain, only the rain, has sheltered me. 
White raven bright with eyes like drops of rain on summer pavement. Do not grow hungry for me. You are too hungry. I will not give you your fill. White raven with soft, clean wings, do not fly down the branch for me. I am only a tremor in the grass, and you will get all wet. Aunt Aggie, Aunt Leslie, Aunt Jen, Nana or Chris under his tree, or Nadyaba inside his box, deep in the earth, under the grass. No matter who you fly to, raven with wings the color of shadow on snow, they will not offer you seed, cold water, or advice on the movements of the wind. If you are lonely, raven, if you must talk, come talk to me, and I will give you berries from my hedge, and brush the bramble from your wings, and hear your complaints of home. He sat on the floor as the storm began, outside his apartment, fixed himself some dinner on a cardboard plate. Vinegar, his sustenance, olives, pickles, cold meat and tonic water, vodka 40% of the time. Though the windows were closed all day, a fly has entered the room somehow, a black fly like the devil's spit. Maybe the black fly is just a black fly. But even if it is, someone or something must get rid of it. I know the white raven could, but I kind of don't want to call that douchebag. <laughs> Maybe the white raven is the Holy Spirit. After a job interview, you know, tired of moving, thinking maybe take a year before my PhD to write maybe a novel or a book about the crosses or the graves in Côte des Neiges. During the First Crusade, when all the wells are poisoned and the livestock dead from disease, and the ravens, white or otherwise, survey the various putrefactions. Robert Kurthose, son of William the Conqueror, meets a local in the ruins of a Fatimid encampment, offers her earrings taken from a corpse in Ak. She accepts, although their color isn't quite her type, he thinks. The girl is not from here. In Prague one evening, coming back to my apartment on Václavské Namiesti, from the arch under the powder gate, near where I met a student from Chicago in a blue dress at a club, who said we would meet there again, then leave for Vienna four years ago. I fumbled trying to open the door. A prostitute offered to open it for me. What thoughtfulness, thought Kurt Hose, bringing the girl a piece of meat a strange white bird had almost stolen from him on the way. She eats, he thinks of home. His brothers who poured out the contents of a chamber pot onto his head as he sat, probably dreaming of someone like her. For this, he raised an army and besieged their castles until dispersed by his father, the conqueror's forces, when the bloodshed became indecent even to that king's discernment. The kind of shit that makes a boy a terrorist. Or alcohol, as is the case of Abu Musa al-Zarqawi who hoard ran drugs out of Amman, discovered God in his urine some luckless morning. A soldier afterward, exchanging the vestments of force infected condoms for corrupted passages of the Hadith, finding the fire in a lail warm as a gas stove lit for tea, I have prepared a flame for those who have chosen the path of unease. Kingdom of Heaven, 
by Ridley Scott is an excellent film. <laughs> no matter what my history teacher told me years ago, no one becomes a knight that fast. It starts with a visual quotation from Dr. Zhivago, another favorite film of mine, across against a winter landscape and a burial. When I was young, I never got to go to any funerals. Is that why the raven is afraid more of sadness than of death? But in my heroic poem on Robert Kurthose, what is supposed to happen is because of famine, all the meat he carries is of human flesh, which was decided by Godefroy de Bouillon to be a necessary thing to eat, given the urgency, of, the urgency of conquest, the necessity of health. He carries her meat one day and finds she isn't there, and looks for her and finds she really isn't there, and goes back, asks his buddies if they've seen her and begins to think she's maybe found some other guy among the ruined huts, and he thinks women, and sits down next to a patch of rotten straw to eat, and practices his sword on broken trees, and jerks off in a poisoned well, discovers earrings in his meat. A white raven visited me yesterday, and cried beside me for hours, and the sun went down like a lead jig into the river, and in its course seemed caught the hesitations of the casting hand. I've no one to say hello to anywhere, the raven said. And I suggested he go read Jolie Sénèque et dessine des vautours at the Contemporary Art Museum, and to go to a church service after in the church by the Place des Arts and to go to the gas bay soon, sit in the grass there whenever come the chance. At day, the grass is dry as a reluctant kiss. At night, it shakes as with impatience. I do not know what the grass is in love with, nor do I know why you love me, raven of the calm, low flight. Thank you.